everybody. Welcome to third grade reading. I'm so excited to be with you today and I have a really fun lesson planned for us. We are going to be rocking and rolling today with reading and math when we get there. So we are going to really focus on rocking and reading today. So let's get started. Okay, here we are. Oh, oh, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Okay. Whew. I just dropped my wand. I need that later. Okay. But actually, that's perfect because it leads me into just what we're doing today, okay? Today, we are going to be looking at a new standard and we are going to be focusing on something different than we've been looking at previously. So, let's go ahead and jump right into it. So, I had a wand that was sitting on the table and I knocked it off. Oh my goodness, it fell off and it hit the floor. And so I have a question for you that I want you to think about for just a minute, okay? So when I bumped into the table, the wand fell to the floor, right? Well, which caused the wand to fall to the floor? Did the wand fall to the floor because I bumped into it? Or did the wand fall off the table because it just fell? Well, let's think about that for a minute. Hmm. I bumped into the wand and I knocked it off the table, right? So I bumping into it caused the wand to fall off the table. So therefore, the effect is the wand fell. Why did it fall? Because I bumped into it. Okay, and so today we're going to be looking at a lot of cause and effect relationships, just like the one that I modeled for you, and we are going to determine what is the cause and what is the effect, okay? So this is our standard that we're gonna be looking at for really the next several weeks, but it's a big standard. It's got a lot in it. And so I've underlined for you the parts that we're gonna focus on this week, okay? It says by the end of this week, and we're probably gonna do a little bit more next week because cause and effect can be kind of hard for us in third grade. Um, we should be able to describe the relationship between a series of historical events, scientific ideas, or steps in a technical procedure using language that pertains to time, sequence, and cause and effect. So notice I said today, since this is our first time doing this, we're not going to just jump into a piece of text and say, hey, let's start trying to look for all these cause and effect relationships. This is a hard concept. You have seen it before one time this school year previously, um, but again, it's hard. So I wanna start from the beginning. And so we're gonna start with just being able to describe a cause and effect relationship today and using that language, those terms cause and effect to describe these um, scenarios. So that's what we're gonna focus on today. All right, so let's jump right in to what we're gonna be doing. All right, so the first thing I wanna do is review, well, what does cause mean and what does effect mean? Okay, now we've obviously heard those terms before, but we still need to come in now and say, okay, what do those mean in terms of describing a relationship? So let's look at that. So I created a chart for us that we'll be using over the next few sessions to help us remember the difference between the cause and the effect. So here, the cause is the why. It's the reason that something happens, okay? When we say because, we are explaining why something happened. We say because of this, right? Well, in because, there's part of the word is the cause, and it's the why, okay? So see, see if you can use that to help you. The effect is the thing that happens. It's the what. What is it that happened? Okay, so you gotta remember the why is your cause and the what is your effect. So let's practice that. Let's look at some really simple examples, all right? So on here I have, I missed the bus. Well, we missed the bus and then we have, and I was late for school. Well, let's think about which one would be cause and which one would be effect. Well, what is the thing that happened? I always like to find the effect first, it helps me, okay? So the effect is that I was late to school. I was late to school. Why was I late for school? I was late for school because I missed the bus. So the cause, I missed the bus, and the effect is, and I was late to school, okay? Let's look at another one. Here we have a boy who blew a big bubble, and then it splattered on his face. Hmm, well, 
what's the thing that happened here? And what is the reason, the why it happened? Well, if we look at it, the big effect, the thing that happened, is that this bubble splatters on his face, right? Well, why did that happen? Because the boy blew a big bubble, okay? And the last one I have is the sun in the rain can make a rainbow. Well, what's the effect? What's the thing that happened? The thing that happened is a rainbow was made, right? Well, why was the rainbow made? What was the cause of that? It was because of the sun and the rain coming together, okay? Does everybody see that? I've also included on our chart a few keywords that kind of give us a hint when you see these. It's a hint to you that, hey, there's a cause and effect relationship that's going on here, okay? So we have the word because, we know that one, we talked about that one. So, if, then, since, due to, or as a result, okay? Because an effect is the result of a cause, of something happening, okay? Of a reason why it's happening. So, let's move over here, and the first thing that we're gonna do today is we're gonna start simple. We're gonna start with pictures, okay? I printed out several pictures that I want us to look at, and I want us to determine, first of all, what's going on in that picture, and if there is a cause and effect relationship that we can describe today, okay? So, if we look at this picture right here, if you notice, I am wearing a poodle skirt, even though I'm talking about rocking and rolling, right? Well, I kind of went back to 50s themed, and so I did the same thing with my pictures over here. Have you ever heard of Elvis Presley? Hmm, well, if you haven't, he was a very famous singer, um, very popular back in the 50s and so further, and so I printed some pictures of some different situations with him and with music, and we're gonna look at those and determine cause and effect. Okay, so the first picture here is of a large crowd of people who are outside of a theater, and there's a sign that says, Elvis Presley in person. Hmm, so think about that picture for just a minute, and think about what is a sentence we could use to describe this picture? Okay, well, they're coming to see him in person live. It could be like a concert or something like that. So we could say there was a large group of people who came to see Elvis in concert. And we know it's Elvis because it says his name up here in the picture. It's a detail that I'm observing, okay? So now that I understand what's happening in my picture, let's see if there's a cause and effect relationship that's going on here, okay? So if we said there was a large group of people who came to see Elvis, well, what would an effect be? What would the thing, the result be here that's happening? The result is, it's that there's what? A large number of people who've come to see Elvis, right? Okay, so a large group of people come to see Elvis. Why do they do that? Why do you go to a concert? Why do you go to a concert? because you enjoy that person's music, right? Okay, so then the cause would be because, now you don't have to start your sentence with because. I like to start that way when I first start teaching the cause because it reminds you that it's the cause, it's the, it's the why, okay? So because people liked Elvis, Elvis's music, okay? Because people liked Elvis's music is the cause and the effect is a large group of people came, we'll put it in the past tense because we did there, came to see Elvis. Do you see how those two things relate and how you have an effect, something that happened 
and then a cause, the why it happened. It happened because people liked his music, okay? Because they wouldn't come if they didn't like it. All right, the next one. This is a picture. Notice my pictures are in black and white because back then they were in black and white. They didn't have much color, okay? And so we see a big crowd of people and we see policemen who are dressed up that are holding their hands together to block the people, okay? So we see people rushing in and being stopped by police. Okay, that's what we see, all right? Well, now let's talk about a cause and effect relationship. What's happening here? What's happening is the people are being what? Stopped by the police, okay? So the effect is people are being stopped by police. Why is that happening? Why is that happening? Because they're all rushing in at one time. And it must not be the time, right? So, because many people rushed in, the effect is that people are being stopped by the police. So the cause, people rush, the effect, the people are now stopped by the police. Okay, they're blocking them. Okay, my last one here is a picture of Elvis again. And he's down here reaching and touching fans' hands. If you've ever been to a concert, you see this happen a lot of times with people who are uh, famous in any way. People want to touch them, okay, because they're famous and they like them. So... Um, if they have that opportunity, then they'll do that. Well, if we look here, we see people who are trying to touch Elvis Presley. Well, what would cause them to do that? We just talked about it. Because they like him, okay? He's famous. So because Elvis is famous, and they like him, The effect is that they reach to touch him. Okay? All right, so that's kind of a little intro of what we're going to be doing. All right, now I did bring a story to read to you guys today, and I'm really excited about it because it's, first of all, a story that I found in my research of trying to find something that was um, music related and I found a really awesome book okay it's one that I've really found that I like and I plan to share it now from now on with all of my classes because it's such a cute book and it's so good for introducing cause and effect okay so I'm gonna read you this book and then as we're reading I want you to really really think about this I want you to think about cause and effect okay what cause and effect relationships do you see in this text? And when we finish, we will sort out some more cause and effect relationships from our book. Okay? So the title of this book is Because. Hmm. We've been talking a lot about causes today. I wonder if it has anything to do with that. Okay? This book is by Mo Willems, and I love the inside covers. Okay? You've actually got music. It's the Symphony Number no. 8 in B minor. Okay, by Franz Schulbert. Here's our cover page, because if you notice on the cover of this book, there's no title. Do you see how they don't actually have the title written? But we see this same little girl that we see in the cover page. Because a man named Ludwig wrote beautiful music, a man named Franz was inspired to create his own. Because many years later, people wanted to hear Franz's beautiful music, they formed an orchestra. Because a man had practiced since he was a kid, he was asked to join. Because a woman studied night and day, she too was asked to play. Because many others loved and practiced their instruments, there were enough musicians. Because someone created a poster about Franz's music, 
tickets were sold. Because the train conductor stopped the train at the Grand Concert Hall, the orchestra conductor arrived. Have you started to notice several cause and effect relationships? It's pretty much all we've seen. Because the orchestra librarian had copies of the score, the orchestra rehearsed. Because workers checked the lights and the seats and swept the floors, the grand hall was ready. Because the time had come, the ushers opened the doors. Because someone's uncle caught a cold, someone's aunt had an extra ticket for someone special. Who do you think that someone special is? Because the usher helped the aunt and her special guest, they found their seats. Because everyone was there to hear beautiful music, it was quiet. Here they are. Now notice this page has no words. But what do we see here? We see the orchestra. Ooh, what do you think this picture represents? Because again, there's no words. What do you think is happening here? Beautiful music must be being played. And I think that the author, I'm sorry, the illustrator is trying to emphasize that to us by drawing these bright, beautiful colors and using their brush strokes to show the sound and music going up with the music notes. In row C, seat 14, sat the girl with the uncle's ticket. She heard the beautiful mu music written by the man named Franz, and it changed her. Hmm, I wonder how it changed her. The girl was changed. Look at the girl in this picture. Here she is. It looks like she's flying. Do you think she's really flying? I don't think she's really flying, but I think they're trying to show us that she has this kind of magical maybe type feeling that makes her feel like she's flying because she's so happy and so excited. Have you ever felt that way before? And it looks like the reasoning, what I see streaming along here, is the music. The music has changed her. I think the illustrator did a good job of showing us that. From that moment on, the girl learned everything she could about music because it fed her. Soon she started to write music too because like Franz, the young woman had something to share. Over time, the woman became very good because she worked very hard. One night, her music was discovered because she also was very lucky. Then she was invited to perform her music at the Grand Concert Hall because so many people wanted to hear it. Her composition was dedicated to the uncle in row C, seat 14, because it was his ticket that brought her here. Now, did the ticket literally bring her here to this point right now? No, but if we think back, it was when she was a young girl and now she's grown up. And as a young girl, that's what changed her. That music changed her. And as we've seen the story develop, it changed her into becoming someone who loved music. She loved to read it, then she loved to write it. And so now she's become what we call a composer herself. And that night, someone else was changed. And that is how it happens, okay? So we see a lot of influence in this story. They're influenced um, by finding something that they love and then it changing their path and it, it directed her path in life. So there was a lot of cause and effect relationships throughout this entire book and I really like just the meaning of the story too, that lesson, if we go back to last week, that lesson that we can learn, um, that hard work and that finding that desire, that thing that she loved and working towards it, she was able to reach that goal of becoming a composer herself. Okay, so if we think back to our story, there are a lot of cause and effect relationships, okay? So I have one for you. It says, because a woman studied night and day, she too was asked to play. Well, which piece of those sentences is the cause and which one is the effect? Listen to it again. Because a woman studied night and day, she too was asked to play. Well, the thing that happened, the what, is that she was asked to play. Okay, what caused her to be asked to play? Because the woman studied night 
and day. So if she studied night and day, do you think she was probably pretty good at this point? Yes, she probably was, okay? So that practice paid off for her. All right, let's look at another one, okay? Because many others loved and practiced their instruments, there were enough musicians. Okay, so if we didn't have anybody else who practiced or worked hard and was really good, could they be a part of the orchestra? No, and then they wouldn't have enough people to play because the orchestra has many people who are in it in order to perform and create their beautiful music. So if we think about this, the effect is that there were enough musicians. Why were there enough musicians? What caused that? Because many others loved and practiced their instruments too. All right, we're gonna look at one more. Okay, she heard the beautiful music written by the man named Franz and it changed her. Okay, well, what is the effect? What's the thing that happened in this sentence, in this part of the story? It was that it changed her. Okay, well, why was she changed? Why was she changed? Because she heard the beautiful music that was written by the man named Franz. If she hadn't heard that, she might not have ever been changed. Okay, so that book was full of cause and effect relationships. The entire book were effects and then the why, the cause, what made those effects go into place. So we are going to keep looking at this standard on Thursday, okay? And we're gonna continue with our rock and roll theme, but we're gonna go with a more modern rock and roll theme on Thursday, okay? So be ready to rock and read on Thursday, and I will see you then. Bye, guys.